What is my purpose? You're only in decks to make a free link two for combos like Mermaid, Verte Anaconda, Moon of the Closed Heaven, and Rabbit. Oh my god. Yeah, welcome to the club, pal. What is going on, guys? Rogue TCG here, brother Yu Gi Oh! TCG deck profile. You know, here at the channel, we love our traps. Not just our trap cards, but our other traps, of course. So, here today, I bring you a deck that contains no monsters in the main monster, uh, in the main deck at all. Here is, oops, no monsters. So this is going to be a deck consisting of primarily all trap cards, uh, the focal point of which being Silo Hat Rabbit. Now, if we have no monsters, how are we going to get Silo Hat Rabbit, you might be asking. Well, you see, the thing is, there is an archetype from around 2018-2019 that specializes in making any Link 2, pretty much, any generic Link 2, and that is Sky Striker. And Sky Striker doesn't need any monsters to do so, either. All you need is a single copy of Sky Striker Mobilize and Gage. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm going to show you a clip real quick to show you how you actually do it, just so you can like conceptualize it in your head how it's supposed to be done. So, here's that clip right here. So now that you see how we are going to be making uh, any Link 2 using as just a single copy of Mobilize Engage, or even just a single copy of Hornet Drones, and we don't even need Engage. Now that you understand the idea of the deck, let me walk you through the card by card so we get an understanding of what this deck is trying to do. So Trap Monsters aren't anything new. They've been released since about, um, I believe since around the first like sets of Yu-Gi-Oh! I remember there were some Trap Monsters. but. The quality of the trap monsters have have risen uh, as of recent years, uh, even as far back as around 2014, 2015, we were getting trap monsters like Statue of Anguish, Patterns, and Stungray, but now we are getting much better, st um, like, continuous traps that are considered monsters, I guess is the way to phrase it. So, that's enough yapping yeah, for me. Let me go over the card by card and let me tell you what I think this deck can do. Starting off with our trap monsters, we're on three of the better ones and less amounts of the worst ones since every single trap monster in the deck is tutorable. I guess let's read Silla Hat Rabbit first and foremost. It needs two effect monsters if the battle is a monster and neither can be destroyed by battle. You can only use each of the following effects as Silla Hat Rabbit once per turn. If this card is link summoned, you can set one continuous trap from your deck to your um, from your deck with an effect that special summons itself as a monster, and it cannot be used as link material this turn. Or, I'm sorry, Silla Hat can't be used as link material. If this card in a spell, if a card in a spell and trap zone is special summoned in the monster zone, you can target a spell, trap your opponent controls, and pop it. So it is like a double form of interaction. It sets an interaction from your deck in order to interact with your opponent, and then when you use that interaction, it also gets rid of a back row, which is very interesting. The fact that it protects itself from battle is also incredibly uh, undervalued, I think, right now, just because clearing a link monster that's problematic in combat, like IP Masquerade and Appalosa, is the main way to deal with it, and Silla Hat Rabbit, that is not an appropriate answer for. So this can fetch any one of our continuous traps in our deck that can be treated as a monster, so do keep that in mind when reviewing them. First off, we're on Triple Silo Hat Trick. Special Summon, this is an effect monster. It's a level 4, 1500 attack, 600 defense. If it's Special Summon, you can target face-up cards or opponent control up to the number of illusions we control and negate their effects until the end of the turn. It itself is an illusion, and with Silo Hat Rabbit, we're planning on negating two face-up cards or opponent controls, not just monsters, cards. Um, so uh, Silo Hat Trick is going to be one of our much better uh, trap monsters in our deck just because this card is one of the ones that actually really does something to interact against our opponent. Next, we are on a triple copies of Angel Statue as a rune. Special Summon Set Effect Monster Fairy Light Level 4, 1800 Attack, 1800 Defense. It is also a trap. Once per turn, when your opponent would special summon a monster while this card is in the monster zone, you can send it. Uh, Send to the graveyard one continuous trap in your monster zone that's special summon from the spell and trap zone. Negate the summon, and if, uh, and if you do, destroy that monster. When this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle, we can destroy the monster that destroyed it. Um, yeah, I don't think there's too much else to say. This is just a solemn uh, warning on legs, and solemn warning is an incredibly strong card. Being able to not just send itself, but also send a, a different card you control to the graveyard to negate the summon is very strong. Uh, especially, uh, I mean, it is a once per turn, but if you can keep the Azurun and do it turn after turn, 
very, very strong. We're on triple Apophis, the Swamp Deity. Um, during the main phase, we can special summon this as a normal monster. 2,000 attack, 22 defense. It's also still a trap, and then you can negate the effects of face up cards or opponent controls up to the number of other continuous traps that we control until the end of this turn. So it's very similar to Silo Hat's trick, but instead of illusions, it is just continuous traps. Not even just trap monsters, just continuous traps. So this will uh, function well with some of our other cards, but we are just trying to max out on mo our really good copies of interactions. So we are on Triple Apophis, the Swamp Deity. We are on Triple Statue of Anguish Pattern. Uh, this one's a little bit of an older one, special summon this an effect monster. Rock, Earth, level 7, 0, 25, Defense. It is still a trap. If summoned this way, this card cannot be targeted with card effects. Will you control another trap card that is a monster? If this card is special summoned from your spell and trap zone to the monster zone, while this while this card is a monster, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. So just being able to pop a card on field is fairly decent, as well as being able to be an untargetable pop is just pretty damn good. So Anguish Pattern, even though it is a little bit older now, I still think this card is still good at three. Popping Disruption, since it doesn't uh, destroy like specifically monsters or specifically back row, is just very versatile and easy to use. We are on a Double Abyss Stungray. Uh, this one is a little bit less great. This one's a level five attack 19, defense zero. Uh, if summoned as an effect monster, it cannot be destroyed by battle, period. So this is our way to just avoid being destroyed by battle. Keep in mind, we do still take damage, so things like Tempai can still kill us if they have enough numbers on their side of the field. But this is just a, one of the more alright trap monsters. Because we've already kind of gone one over all the really good trap monsters already. Unfortunately, there's only really those ones, in my opinion. So now we're starting to go on to our lower class of trap monster. Next is two Tiki Soul. Special summon this is an effect monster, rock, light, level 4, 1000 attack, 18 defense. Still a trap when this card is an effect monster of another trap you, you control that is a monster would be destroyed by your opponent's card, either by battle or card effect, and sent to the graveyard. You can set it in the spell and trap zone instead. So instead of our traps going to the graveyard, we reset them. Just an incredibly powerful effect, but it isn't an effect that stacks multiple times, so we don't want to be playing enough where we're going to be seeing multiples of this card, potentially. And since we do have Silo Hat Rabbit, this is a tutorable card in our deck, so we are just playing two copies of it, since it is still very good. We're on one Kui Beko. Uh, this card actually isn't really that good, unfortunately, but it is a newer card, so it is phrased in such a way where we still are going to be playing it. Special summon this card is Infect Monster Fairy Earth level 200 with the following effects. It is still a trap. Once per chain, when your opponent activates a monster effect on field that targets a card we control, quick effect, we can set this card from our spell and uh, we can set this card in our spell and trap zone. And if we do negate that opponent's effect, then if the monster has the highest attack on the field, we get to bounce it. Um, targeting effect negation is all right. It is not the best. Um, it is very telegraphed because it needs to be on field as a monster. So your opponent already knows what's up. However, it still isn't the absolute worst, uh, specifically because it does reset itself and we do, we are playing Silo Hat Rabbit. So it is nice to protect our Silo Hat Rabbit from being destroyed because that's the only real way it can be destroyed is with a target removal. So if we do predict that they're going to be targeted removal and we do have the Quebeco, it could come up, or Quebeco, I'm sorry if I was pronouncing that wrong. Um, but it is just not overall the absolute best comparative to all the other traps we've already covered. We're on one Zoma, the Earthbound Spirit. Uh, this is just a little bit of an upgrade of, from the original Zoma, the Spirit. Special summon this is an effect monster for 1800 attack, 500 defense. All monsters your opponent controls that, that can attack must attack this card. If this card is special summon destroyed by an opponent's monster's attack, inflict damage to your opponent, max 3,000, equal to double the original attack of the attacking monster. So it's just a way to get some cheeky burn in, and it's kind of like Ubel with their continuous spell up where they have to attack Zoma. So it's another good way to protect your other uh, trap monsters if that is something that you are very concerned about. And if you are whittling your opponent down and your opponent summons a big monster, we could just summon Zoma the Earthbound Spirit, force them to attack into it, and then they do have to just lose the game. We are also on our last trap monster, one Tiki Curse. Special summon this is an effect monster, rock type dark, level 4, 1800 attack, 1000 defense. Still a trap, while well, this is an effect monster, if another trap card that, uh, that's a monster battles an opponent's monster, after damage calc, destroy that opponent's monster. Um, it's interesting, it's a way that your monster is always going to clear a monster in battle, or rather our trap monsters are going to clear monsters by battle, like by default. 
However, our main game plan isn't really by going to combat. It's more removing, removing our opponent's board like systematically and then slowly controlling the game to a point where we are able to just like beat face with a million trap monsters and win. But that's it for our, I guess, monsters to say. We're on 19 monsters, trap monsters, I don't really know. But now onto our other traps. We're on triple soul drain. None of our cards have graveyard effects. So soul drain is very good, especially in this format, in my opinion. Activate by paying a thousand life points. Monsters that are banished as well as monsters in the graveyard cannot activate their effects. No poplar, no diabels, uh, no, I mean, I guess diabels does have a graveyard effect. No flamberge, no uh, fiendsmith engraver, no lurry, no in, um, Requiem, none of those cards are going to be able to activate in the graveyard, which is, I think, very critical for this format, including in Banished, so this also does stop a Ritual Beast. So this card is very versatile, and I think this probably is like the floodgate of the format that you should be looking into playing if your deck does not lose to its own effect. We're also on Triple Imperial Customs. Face of Continuous Traps cannot be destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, except Imperial Custom. So this basically says, well, this is face up, um, your opponent has to destroy custom first. And this counts our trap monsters, like this does count our trap monsters. So while this is face up on field, all our trap monsters can't be destroyed by battle and can't, uh, can't be destroyed by card effect, uh, which means they become very, very difficult to remove if we have an Imperial custom on board. Of course, our opponent could just go SP Little Knight to, you know, shuffle, I mean, banish the Imperial custom. But that's what Quebeco, Quibico is here for. It's here to prevent that. So that is the one use of Quibico in this deck is to protect the card that protects Quibico. So very weird interactions there. However, very funny as well as being able to play an old card is always pretty goaded. But that's it for our traps. Now let's go on to our spells that are hopefully going to help win us the game. We're on our small Sky Striker engine. If we're going second, Sky Strikers are going to help us push through established boards. As well as if we're going first, it allows us to set up an easy Silo Hat Rabbit. We're on Triple Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, able to fetch any other Sky Striker card if you have enough spells and graveyard. It also is just Pot of Greed. We are on a double Afterburners. If we control no monsters in our main monster zone, we can pop a uh, monster our opponent controls. And if we have enough spells, we can then pop a spell. You know, just good stuff. Just being able to pop cards is really good for clearing boards. Double Widow Anchor is just negation if we have no monsters in our main monster zone, and if we have three spells in our graveyard, it also is like Snatch Steel, so a great way to make our Silo Hat Rabbit. Same with Shark Cannon. Shark Cannon is like DD Crow in that way, but again, all the Sky Strikers need us to have no monsters in our main monster zone, so once we start committing traps to our board, they do kind of die down, so once we see them in our hand, we want to try and use them as quickly as possible, and get as much value out of them as possible, of course. Now, don't just waste the Sky Striker spells just because you want to be at baiting your trap monsters you want to be utilizing them in proper ways in order to bait out interactions so our opponent has less to deal with our trap monsters and then lastly the best sky striker card hornet drones which creates a token if you remember that combo i showed you earlier this is the main card that makes it all happen we have no cards that activate in hand or anything of the like so we are playing a triple a time at tearing morganite and we are planning on having the game last more than like four turns or so so this is just going to be a card that's going to let us eventually win the game. So Morganite is very good in that aspect. Unfortunately, we can't use the double summon effect, but all is good when we are drawing two per turn. And then lastly, we are on a triple pot of extravagance. Uh, even though we do have the Sky Striker line we need to do, uh, all of that is possible just with Kagari, Kaina, and or Hayate. So just we just need these three. Those are the Sky Strikers we need, and we only need three Silla Hat Rabbit. Everything else in the extra deck is completely useless. We only need one of each of the Sky Strikers, so once we use them, we're done. And we are just playing the Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, just because we can have situations where we are paired up against problematic monsters, like towers-like monsters, where there's realistically nothing we can really do against them unless, make a, unless we are making a white woman. Uh, in our side deck, uh, we are on Mimesis Elephant. Um, this isn't a good card. I just want to bring it up. Uh, special summon this card is an effect monster. Beast, earth, level 2, attack 0, defense 2000. It is still a trap. If this card in the monster zone, quick effect, you can declare one type and attribute, then target one face of monster on the field. It becomes that type and attribute until the end of the turn. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, right now, Fiendsmith is by far and away the best thing this deck can, can be splashing into it because of the ability to make Beatrice. And basically tutor any card in the deck from, from the deck to the graveyard. 
However, Fiendsmith has the one quality where it needs light fiends in order to do anything, especially when they're making Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Um, however, if we target their Underworld Goddess, or the mini Underworld Goddess, the mini white woman, with Menaces Elephant, and we make it, I don't know, maybe like a, a Water Aqua, something like that, we can really mess up an opponent really bad by doing that. Because the entire reason they put the Link 2 on their field is because they knew the Link 2 was going to translate into more materials. However, if we change that formula from translating to more materials for it just staying on the board, suddenly our opponent has just minus themselves heavily in order to make a Link 2 that does nothing and is now a Water Aqua. So it is pretty much unusable, especially if they're playing a deck that, I don't know, let's say, for example, Fiend locks themselves or something along that lines. Suddenly they lose access. They don't have, they no longer have that Fiend on their side of the field to make their Yama. Like, I just think that Mimesis Elephant is very cute. And I think more people should actually consider playing it with Silo Hat Rabbit in order to just turn off the, the Fiendsmith line. It just turns it off it's really great but that's gonna be about it for the video thank you all so much for watching if you still are and i'll be seeing you all later bye bye thank you guys so much for watching the video if you wanted to talk to more Yu-Gi-Oh players like yourself i would highly recommend checking out our discord server link is going to be in the description as well as the qr code on screen we do talk somewhat frequently about Yu-Gi-Oh! and the current meta, so I would really enjoy to see you there. As well as we do recently now have channel memberships available on our YouTube channel, where we have three different tiers. We have Super Supporter at $2 a month, where you get loyalty badges, emojis, guaranteed comment responses, a shout out at the end of every video, as well as access to the members only Discord channel, where you get early sneak peeks at future videos. There is the Giga Supporter at $5 a month where you have early access to all new videos about a day or two before they go up as well as all the previous offers. And for $15 a month, we do have our final tier which is gonna be Femboy Fanatic. You get a guaranteed customized video every single month as well as one hour of my time. Could be for anything you'd like. You want a duel? Absolutely. You want me to help build the deck? Absolutely. You want to play some Hell Divers? Sure. I'll do anything for an hour once a month. But supporting does help me out quite a lot and it does help me produce all of these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be seeing y'all later. Bye bye.